Looking down on the pitch, the first and third posts are opposite each other. Second post is in direct line with a batting and bowling square. The bowling square, A, is 8 feet. The batting square, B, is 6 feet. S shows the position of the substitute runner, 39 and a half feet from first post. The dotted line through the front of the batting square divides the forward and backward area, referred to later in the film, particularly in relation to a backward hit. From the batting square to first, second and third posts is 39 and a half feet, and from third to fourth and fourth to the batting square is 28 feet. The captain who wins the toss has the choice of fielding or batting. The most usual position of the fielding side are post fielders, one, two, three, four, bowler, backstop and three deep fielders. A good captain will place her deep fielders according to the hitting of the batting team. Backstop can play fourth post as well and so release another player for fielding. To score rounders, the player must not only hit well, but run quickly between the posts, using good judgment in stopping at a post or running on. Poor fielding gives unnecessary advantage to the batting side. Another good hit. Batsman must run outside the post, touching fourth post to complete the rounder. You can learn to hit well. Now watch these batsmen carefully to acquire technique. A firm hold of a stick near the end. Good balance. A large arm swing combined with body movement and correct timing is the essence of powerful hitting. The batsman can step sideways and backwards, but she is out if she steps over the forward line like this, dangerous play to fielders. Skilled batting is essential to good rounders. The batsman must be able to place the ball out of the reach of the fielders and the direction depends on the time of impact. Watch the immediate start to first post. Very poor. Past first post, between second and third, between first and second, a beautiful swing. A rounder scored without hesitation at any post. The batsmen are standing in a good position, giving backstop and fourth post clear vision. The batsman has missed the ball, so has the backstop. Half a rounder is scored. When the ball has passed over the forward area, referred to in the diagram of the pitch, she can run on. 
half a rounder is scored. If the second post had been touched whilst the batsman stopped at first post, a rounder would not have been scored. This batsman runs to the fourth post and fails to touch it. She is out. Good use of the stick, reaching for a post or from a post, can be of a great advantage. The batsman has left third post before fourth post is stumped. Watch again. She is out. This player stops at third post while fourth post is stumped. She can run on, but she cannot score as the post immediately ahead has been stumped. Watch again. Both are out. The first player must run on. She is out. A batsman is put out by touching a post with a ball in the hand. The post must be touched all the time by stick or hand, otherwise it is assumed the player has left the post. And the fielding team can put her out in the usual way. In the case of the last batsman, the team should be trained to bounce the ball in the square. To stump a batsman, the post to which she is running must be touched. But to stump third post before the batsman leaves second post does not put her out. Notice the position of the batsmen who are out. Instruction by the batting side puts the player out. By the fielding side, the award of half a rounder. A batsman must not deflect the ball with stick or foot, nor must a fielder obstruct a batsman. Fourth post does not obstruct. Fourth post does obstruct, not out, half a rounder. This deep fielder obstructs, not out, half a rounder. And through obstruction, this player runs to the inside of the post, not out, half a rounder. Good fielding on the ground or in the air requires the body to be behind the ball. It is safer to use two hands, except in cases of emergency. The eyes should follow the flight of the ball and the hands and the body should be relaxed. Don't stand admiring it. 
throw it in at once to a post fielder and more than one player may be put out. A good catch. Backing up in the deep field is essential. If the distance is great, it may be necessary to throw in in stages. Good backing up again. Too high, too low, neither should it be too near the body or on the wrong side. The bowler may follow through and come out of the square providing the ball has left her hand. This bowler makes good use of the square and uses body weight to increase pace. Now standing still, poor. And again, good bowling. A ball can be looped, providing it reaches the batsman at the correct height. It can also spin. Good bowling is varied in type, height and speed. Backstop should stand close to the square to catch the ball before it pitches. She allows the ball to pitch and she misses it. Backstop can put out the batsman before she leaves the square, but she must be careful not to obstruct the batsman's swing. Transference of body weight with a quick turn and left foot forward ensures a speedy, accurate throw to first post. A very good position of the backstop stance. Backing up. Backstop has vision of the whole field and should call for catches. It can prevent an accident and save a catch. He should also call to the post fielders and more than one player may be put out on the same ball. Good quality equipment will play better and is, in the long run, far more economical in use. Sticks are made with ash or willow blades. The larger stick is match quality with willow blade, spliced cane handle and rubber spring. The smaller stick is for practice. This stick has been specially made by expert craftsmen on principles similar to a cricket bat. The straight grain blade is carefully tested for balance and fitted with cane spliced handle and double rubber springs to avoid jarring. Practice sticks are mass produced in one piece for cheapness. The blades must have straight grain. This match quality stick has a spliced handle with rubber spring. Occasional rubbing with linseed oil is good for the willow but not for the ash blades. Good straight poles painted white and with a special smooth plastic finish are waterproof and splinter proof. 
These regulation type bases are heavy cast iron with well rounded lips so that the poles fit snugly. These are well balanced to give just the right amount of topple when touched in play that no post will stand up to hard hitting. Poles must be kept in good order, painted, kept dry and in a cool temperature. Look after your equipment and it will serve you well. If you are going to keep up a good standard of play, it is most important that when each ball is struck by the bat, it should behave in exactly the same way. To make certain of this, the manufacturer takes every possible precaution to see that the balls are of a uniform quality and identical in weight and size. These are some of the basic materials from which the rounders ball is made. The cork centers are specially imported from Portugal. The wool comes from Yorkshire and the cotton from the Lancashire spinning mills. The wool and cotton is wound on the cork center by this machine. After being started by hand, it continues to wind the ball, turning it all the time so that it remains perfectly round. A complicated arrangement of weights and pulleys ensures that the tension of the yarn remains exactly the same for each ball. The machine stops automatically when the ball reaches the required size. A layer of cotton is put on and after being tested for size and weight is then ready to receive its cover. The lever from which the covers are to be cut is first inspected for flaws and the thickness checked with a gauge before it is passed to the power press operator to cut the covers. The machine also makes the needle holes ready for the stitcher. Two of these figure eight pieces are used for each ball. After the covers have been tacked into position, the ball is placed in a wooden clamp, operated by the stitcher by means of a leather strap round her foot. The pure linen thread is first rubbed with beeswax to preserve it, and a needle is threaded to each end. The end of the threads are frayed and twisted around the needles to prevent slipping. The two needles are used like the action of lacing a shoe. Gradually, the stitcher works her way round the ball, cutting the tacking stitching as she goes. Moving the ball in the clamp as required and pulling hard on each stitch to draw the seams together by twisting the thread round the leather thongs on her fingers. Having worked her way around the ball back to the point from which she started, the ends are fastened off neatly and securely. In the warehouse, the balls receive their final inspection and are again checked before being branded and boxed and sent on their way to provide further hours of pleasure and excitement in another game of rounders. Rounders has established itself in schools and youth clubs throughout the United Kingdom. As a team game, it is probably unrivaled in the number of mixed teams participating. It is organised in leagues and also in rallies, both local and county. As the centre of a great commonwealth, the United Kingdom has given to its member nations, and indeed to the world at large, many fine games, such as football, cricket and rugby. Rounders too, through school and clubs, has been adopted in Kenya, Rhodesia, Nigeria, British East Africa, Denmark and Sweden, and by members of the British forces stationed throughout the world. A game that demands skill of hand and eye, judgment and alertness, 
It requires, too, a good standard of physical fitness. Played well, it is exciting and exhilarating, but, true of all games, the amount of pleasure derived depends on mastering the techniques of batting, bowling and fielding, having a clear understanding of the rules and a true team spirit.